Hello, and welcome to the second episode of the Mega Mario Marathon. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the 1981 classic and Mario's first appearance, Donkey Kong. Before we get to Donkey Kong, here's a little backstory. Failing to secure the rights to make a game based on the Popeye comic strip, Nintendo has a young designer, Shigeru Miyamoto, and their head engineer, Gunpei Yokoi, design a new game to replace Nintendo's other arcade game, Radar Scope. Thus, Donkey Kong was born, with each character sharing a similar role to the ones in Popeye, with Donkey Kong acting as Bluto, Pauling acting as Olive Oil, and Mario acting as Popeye himself. The original arcade was released in Japan on July 9, 1981, and later that year in North America. The name Donkey Kong actually comes from Miyamoto using a Japanese to English dictionary, with donkey meaning stubborn, silly, or stupid, and Kong being Japanese slang for gorilla. Mario was originally called Osan, meaning middle-aged guy in Japanese, and Mr. Video during development, but eventually got the name Jumpman due to other arcade hits with similar names such as Pac-Man. However, Nintendo of America decided to change the name to Mario as the character reminded them of their landlord, Mario Sagali. Sagali? The scene opens to a damsel in distress, Pauline, who is Mario's love interest, being kidnapped by the great ape, Donkey Kong. Mario must save her at all costs. Simple story, and one that would be the basis for most future Mario games. Funny enough, it's revealed in the later ports that Donkey Kong did this because he was Mario's pet, and Mario actually mistreated Donkey Kong. Yeah, Mario is kind of the villain. Think about it. The most carefree, family-friendly, lovable character in video games. Abusing his pet. Well, <laughs> ignoring Mario's deranged side, let's get to the gameplay. The game consists of four stages. In the Japanese version, the stages are 25 meters, 50 meters, 75 meters, and, you guessed it, 100 meters. However, the North American version does something different. Each level adds a new stage. On level 1, Donkey Kong consists of stages 25 meters and 100 meters. By level 5, the stages are 25 meters, 50 meters, 25 meters again, 75 meters, 25 meters a third time, and finally 100 meters, and it continues like this until the player loses all lives. 25 meters has Mario jumping over barrels and avoiding a fire that starts at the bottom near the oil drum. Jumping over certain barrels, and over multiple barrels at once, will yield more points. As the level increases, more barrels will appear and take different patterns, and more fire will appear. 50 meter consists of dodging pies, well, it's actually cement, and fire. This level, and all the other levels except 25 meters and any repeat of 25 meters, contains Pauline's hat, purse, and umbrella, which can be gathered for extra points. 75 meters contains elevators that Mario must navigate from, and Donkey Kong bombarding the player with springs. And the most annoyingly placed fire you can imagine. 100 meter contains randomly appearing fireballs that the player must dodge, and 8 rivets, well, I assume they're rivets, that Mario must collect to cause Donkey Kong to fall from the tower. This yields a successfully completed level. In all stages except 75 meters, there are hammers that Mario can use to destroy enemies or barrels. This usually yields a good amount of points, so it's necessary to obtain that top score. Donkey Kong is a pretty difficult game. I mean, it's not brutal like Ghosts and Goblins, but you need to bring your A-game if you want to get a top score. Now, Donkey Kong was a rousing success for Nintendo, and it inspired many home ports. Here's a list of the ones I have. This is the 2600 version. 
Those are definitely Ritz crackers. Where's the fire at the bottom? And what's wrong with Mario's face? Ugh. It only contains stages 25 meters and 100 meters. And the sound effects and graphics are way off, but... Is, are those cats? Anyway, the 2600 came out in 1977, so we're lucky to have a version on it at all. Playable, but not even close to the arcade experience. This is the Intellivision version. As you can see, it is an improvement on the 2600 version, but it's still got a long way to go. Like the 2600 version, this only contains 25 meters and 100 meters, and those things still look like cats. In the Intellivision version, though, you can collect Pauline's objects for extra points, which was missing from the 2600 version. Playable, but still a long way away from perfect. This is Donkey Kong and the ColecoVision. Little fun fact, did you know Coleco was responsible for several of the home console releases of Donkey Kong? This version contains stages 25 meters, 75 meters, and 100 meters, although they're out of order. The graphics and sound are quite good and emulate the arcade pretty well. A feature in this version, which I actually prefer, is the inclusion of falling momentum. In the original arcade, when you fell, you dropped straight down, but the ColecoVision version allows you to drop at an angle. Cool feature, even though the arcade didn't have it. If you're going to get a pre-NES version, I highly recommend this one. Next up, we have the Commodore 64. Okay, now how do I go about this? Okay, this is the Atari Soft version on the Commodore 64. Ocean also released a version on the Commodore, which is actually a more faithful arcade port, but I don't have it. This version is still very faithful to the arcade and includes all the stages. It's got good quality music and sound, although the color palette is a little off. A great version. If you can get it, I highly recommend it. How does the Atari 7800 version hold up? It's a far cry from perfect. You know, I'm not even sure if this version is as good as the ColecoVision version. While the graphics have improved tremendously from the 2600, the music <laughs> is a bit grating on the ears. But the sound effects are a very good emulation of the arcade. Well, compared to the 2600. Playable, yes. The best, no. Ah, the first version to be released on a Nintendo console, the NES port. This is as close as you can get to the arcade, except for one little thing. The game is completely missing stage 50 meters. I'm not really sure why they didn't include it. If you're gonna play a version of Donkey Kong besides the arcade, this is the one. Or, there's also a version on the Game Boy Advance that's basically a port of this version. Not a port of the arcade, but a port of the NES port of the arcade. Weird. Both are very enjoyable.
Let's take a real quick look at the Game Boy version. I know it includes a completely different game inside of it, but at the very beginning you play a very great version of Donkey Kong. It even includes the classic arcade transitions. And the Fable, the mysteriously missing from other ports for some reason. 50 meters. Very good. Well, that's all the versions of Donkey Kong that I happen to own, but there's plenty more, especially on the home computer. You've got a version on the Amstrad CPC, the Apple II, the Atari home computer, the Commodore VIC-20, and there's plenty more. Well, that's Donkey Kong. With it, Nintendo would dive into the North American arcade market, and Mario would help lead the way for their biggest endeavor yet. Oh, but we'll get to that later. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at a game that many people probably don't consider a part of the main series. But to me, it just feels empty without it. So next time, we take a look at Donkey Kong Jr. Thanks for watching the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see more of the series. Be sure to share with your friends, too.